Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. For today's second video, that's going to take us to the beginning of December. I think the 2nd of December is uh, day 10. So we'll have a look and see what the uh, models are showing for the next week to 10 days. We'll be able to extend out beyond that a little bit with the GFS and the ESM so we'll have to around a couple of weeks. So have a look at the 7th week to the December at the end of the video. JMA Friday has been released. That's your month end look at, and it's taking us from uh, from today, 20, uh, 22nd of November, right way through to the second half of December. So it's a 30 day look at, and uh, it looks rather mild, I have to say, for the first half of December. But anyway, have a look at JMA Friday, see what's going on there. We're going to be back at 7 o'clock tonight with the ninth Christmas update, having a little bit of a laugh uh, with 7SB2 and see what it's showing. Uh, again for Christmas. We're going to begin in the stratosphere though, be keeping an eye on this all week. So uh, these blue and purple colours are the cold temperatures at to 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the North Pole. Very cold time of year of course over the uh, in the Arctic both on the surface and in the stratosphere. Uh, but uh, we've got these blue colours, that's where we've got uh, cold temperatures at 10 HPA. Um, and we're looking for a, a warming of the stratosphere uh, uh, through the next um, few weeks and months. Typically, uh, uh, stratospheric warming happens later in the winter rather than through the earlier part of the winter. But the GFS has been sort of playing with the idea that we might get a uh, significant warming of the stratosphere through the early part of uh, December. Let's see what the late, although over the past day or so, it has backed off from that uh, just a little bit. Let's see what the latest GFS run is doing so again it has these blue and purple colors here over the arctic uh over the next couple of weeks not really any change up to the final day of december we keep those blue purple colors there so temperatures remain quite cold at 10 hpa in the stratosphere Moving into the extended range, uh, well, this particular GFS run starts to warm the stratosphere over Siberia around the 2nd and 3rd. And here we go, we're back into a major sudden stratospheric warming taking place over Siberia uh, as we get through into the late into the first week of December. So that gets us up to the 8th of December, a significant warming uh, the stratosphere has taken place over Siberia and is showing signs of starting to push its way in towards the Arctic. As I say, the GFS has backed off from this uh, idea over the past 24 hours or so on many of its runs. But it, here, we are, here we are on the 6 o'clock run of the GFS and it's back with the idea of a very significant warming of the stratosphere taking place over Siberia through the first week of December. So we shall see. It's playing around with ideas. It certainly isn't definitive or certain at this stage. Uh, it never seemed to be getting a great deal closer. That's one thing I have to say. So um, two or three days ago, this was due to happen around the 1st of December. Uh, now it looks like it's more kind of like the 4th, 5th, 6th of December. So not getting any closer. Um we just have to keep an eye on it. And as I say, this is the first one that we've seen for around 24 hours um, where the GFS has been showing this in the stratosphere. So I think we just need to keep a close eye on it. We will keep monitoring it. But um, at the moment, there is a lot of uncertainty about whether we're going to get this warming of the stratosphere over Siberia uh, through, the, through the first week of December. We shall see about that. Uh, right, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're going to gloss up in the North Midlands today. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average uh, for gloss up. And uh, we're starting off close to average at the moment. But we're going to see the temperature lifting up over the next few days. Uh, so the final week of November should be a little bit more until the very last day or so of the month where we might get a little bit of a cold snap or uh, few on some members dropping down there just briefly for around uh, 24 hours or so around um, the final day of uh, November and the first day of December. After that, looks like the temperatures are lifting up through the first week of December, although we did have a very cold GFS run show up, uh, which I will show in a moment. The midnight run of the GFS did uh, have a lot of cold weather through the first week of December, but it was quite a cold outlier, actually. You see, the general trend with most of those GFS ensemble members is actually relatively mild through the first week of uh, December. 
precipitation wise a lot of rainfall uh, coming up over the next few days so plenty of precipitation spikes there as we go into the first week of december just a little bit of a drying trend perhaps not quite as wet for that first week of december as the temperatures are becoming milder so presumably some sort of influence of high pressure from the south or southwest you would have thought uh taking us out of the very wet weather we're going to have through the first uh through the final week of uh, november taking us out of that um but also lifting up the temperature too perhaps so uh, generally quite mild for the next couple of weeks a little bit of a cold snap around the turn of the month and uh, very wet to start off with maybe a bit drier through the first week of uh, uh, of December. Uh, remember, this is a suggested uh, location for this section of video. So if you'd like to have your local town or city feature within this part of the video, uh, then you can let us know through uh, the comments uh, to Gazwebids or through our social media accounts on Facebook or Twitter. Or you can email gazwebids at gmail.com. And we're always happy to feature your local town or city in this part of the video. Temperature anomalies from the 22nd uh, to the 30th of November above average, really across the whole of Europe, actually. The UK is including that. It's going to be a milder final week to uh, December. Precipitation anomalies still continue to be rather wetter than average, particularly for England and Wales, but also for parts of East of Scotland, too. Over in America, it's a very mild scene across much of the states away from this Pacific Northwest and part of America. Anyway, most parts of, uh, of the United States have above average temperatures. If we had and precipitation anomalies varying from state to state, but looking really wet, interestingly, in this southwestern area, one of the drier areas of the states, actually looking very wet in the, uh, in the weekend. More sort of northern and northeast areas actually look rather drier. So this is about midnight GFS, and I thought I'd just show you this. It is a cold outlier, so it's, it's very, very unlikely to verify, but it's got a little bit of eye candy in it for anybody who likes cold weather. So here we are on Monday. Low pressure is moving in from off the Atlantic. That's been cloud and outbreaks of rain. Uh, with it, and we keep these areas of low pressure going into the early part of next week. In fact, it could be really wet around the middle of next week. Into the second half of next week, we see the um, low pressure just beginning to ease off a little bit. And uh, so we probably lose the intensity of the rainfall, but I would expect still quite showery, even up to then. Uh, up to day 10, though, notice this ridge building out to the northwest of us. So that starts to turn winds into the north or the northeast. That will begin to bring colder air down from the north and the northeast. This low pressure clears uh, away. And then in the extended range uh, of the midnight GFS run, we really reinforce that area uh, of high pressure, that blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. And we get this deep area of low pressure diving down the North Sea from uh, Norway. So that's a very wintry scenario. If that came up, that would deliver quite a lot of snow, I would have thought, to many parts of the country. But remember, it was a significant cold outlier, so it's very unlikely to um, to verify. But, I mean, that's a really wintry scenario of low pressure just in the North Sea, high pressure blocking around Greenland and Iceland, and a strong cold north to north easy wind driving in, no doubt, quite a lot of snow showers uh, and then keeping that low pressure sitting close to us on Thursday the 5th again probably snow uh, involved with that but the low finally clears away uh, although we finish up still looking quite cold actually even up to the 8th of December another low pressure is running down the North Sea and uh, again just reinforcing that northerly wind so that was a very very cold um midnight gfs run for the first week of december but as we see within the gfs ensembles the general trend for that first week of november of uh, december is definitely milder the first week of december is definitely looking milder uh, within the gfs ensemble so quite an outrageous cold outlier uh really uh with midnight gfs run. this is a six o'clock gfs run the very latest, bringing low pressure in from off the Atlantic on Monday with showers or longer spells of rain into next week looking very, very unsettled indeed with these areas of low pressure continuing to drive in from off the Atlantic Ocean. So the last week of November is going to bring significant wet weather to many parts of the country. 
First day of the December, just turns the winds into the north a little bit, but nowhere near as much blocking as we had on the midnight GFS run. You see we've got this high pressure building in from the west, but its centre is actually to our southwest. So all that's going to happen with this is that Madre is going to pile in around the top of the ridge. And that's exactly what happens as we get up towards day 10. We've got high pressure, yes, sitting close to us, but unlike the midnight GFS run, which had that high pressure in the middle of the North Atlantic and took it up to Greenland. This one is going to have, uh, this one has a high pressure kind of over to our southwest and is drawing up much milder southwesterly winds. A little bit of a northerly snap uh, there on the 3rd of December, but not supported by any uh, particular area of high pressure to our north. And in the more extended range, this GFS run uh, really ramps up the polar vortex. Look at that, been uh, quite a while since we've seen such a uh, deep purple colour sitting to our north. That's a very intense polar vortex that's whipping up there on the 6 o'clock run of the GFS. And it's generally mild through the first week of uh, December with this high pressure continuing to sit just to our southwest dragging up those mild or potentially very mild uh, southwesterly winds. It is a bit drier though uh, through the first week of December with this ridge closer so that's an important factor. It is, it is drier but also milder on the 6 o'clock GFS run. GM looks like that, so low pressure continues to drive in from off the Atlantic through much of next week, bringing further showers and longer spells of rain. It will be very wet around the middle of uh, next week. This deep area of low pressure has a central pressure, I think, of 975 millibars, so that's a really deep area of low pressure again through the middle part of next week, bringing further rain at times and no doubt a renewed risk of some localised flooding. A little bit cooler there for Friday the 29th, wind turning into the north, but not long before the next low is rattling back through. Uh, that's how we look at day 10. Again, same idea as the 6 o'clock GFS run, really. This ridge is building up from the southwest, and uh, that is setting things down for these uh, opening days of December. It's turning drier, but under that ridge, it's relatively mild. Although the GM is having a go at turning wind into the north, it looks like most of that is going to push down into Scandinavia and northern parts of Europe. ECM, again, low pressure is continuing to drive in from off the Atlantic through the course of next week, particularly for England and Wales, looking very wet. Further north, we are closer to this blocking area of high pressure, so it's drier but colder next week for Scotland. By the second half of next week, we're all going rather cooler, actually, on the ECM uh, solution. And then into the end of next week, where well, the next low is uh, moving in from off the Atlantic, bringing a wet end to this very wet November and autumn. And that low pressure then up to day 10 pulls away to our east. And the ECM also pulls down some colder northerly winds by day 10, which is Monday the 2nd of December. A little bit of a cold snap showing up there. So there are a few hints that sometime around the very end of month, beginning of December, we might get a cold snap. There are one or two hints still within the model output. Very wet through, through the final week of November. Possibly a little bit of a cold snap uh, sometime around the turn of the month. And then probably going a bit milder and drier through the first week of December. That could be the way things are panning out. But you'll have gathered there is a lot of uncertainty here. Uh, and there is a lot of intramodal variation going on. Uh, this is the precipitation forecast from that ECM run. Just again, highlighting the fact we are going to have a lot of wet weather. So rain piling into the southwest uh, through this afternoon. And then another pulse of rain coming across many parts of the country tomorrow. That heading up to Scotland. As we go into Sunday, so it should be a rather drier day, but it won't be long before the next rain is pushing in across the Atlantic. Again, that particularly affecting parts of England and Wales. Uh, and the rain bands just keep coming, so again, it's up to the middle of next week. Further heavy rain in across England and Wales, and showers across eastern parts of Scotland uh, as well. A little bit drier for a day or two at the end of next week, slightly colder. And then, yes, here comes the next wet band of wet weather for the final uh, day of um, November, ending November on a very, very wet note. A little bit of hill snow suggested with that over the Pennines. And then things go a little bit drier, but also colder for the end of the month. So that's how we look as we get to day 10. With uh, showers turning wintry by then up in the north. And even, even a little bit of winteriness in those showers running down the east coast. 
These are the options are on the table within the ECL Sobbles today for day 10, which gets us to the 2nd of December. So we have 16 members of the uh, ECL Sobbles with a ridge of above average heights out to our southwest. That's a drier and milder solution, bring the winds in from the west or the southwest. 14 have a mid-Atlantic ridge going up to Greenland and a deep trough of low pressure sitting to our east. Obviously, that would turn the wind into the north. So, I mean, that's going to be cold and wintry on that solution by day 10. Uh, 12 just here have a trough of below average heights just over and slightly to our east and a ridge of above average heights again in the middle of the Atlantic, a mid-Atlantic ridge going up to Greenland. Uh, that was going to be quite cold and potentially rather wintry. That includes the control and the operational ECM run too. And then nine with above average heights just out to our west. So that's a drier solution. Uh, and starting to bring some slightly uh, less cold air around the top of that ridge from um, the Atlantic. So there's, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty as we get to day 10. I would think the majority of those uh, in South Southern so possibly hint at something rather colder for the early part of December. Just a little bit of a cold snap then, uh, maybe. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 7th of uh, December. So 16 members of the East Ensembles with high pressure over France, low pressure to our northwest. That's going to be bringing up southwesterly winds. That's going to be very mild. 13 with high pressure just to west of Ireland. Going to be uh, generally quite mild with those ones as well, you would have thought. 12 looking much more unsettled with low pressure in across the country. Uh, but relatively mild, perhaps. And then uh, number 10 down here, or 10 down here, with high pressure up towards Greenland. And low pressure, deep low pressure, over the UK, basically. So that's the most unsettled of the options. And potentially a little bit on the cold side, too. Probably still on the cold side of the jet uh, with that one. Does look as though through the first week of December, the ECM ensembles are hinting at things. Perhaps going a little bit drier, um... And perhaps a little bit milder as well through the first week of uh, December after maybe a cold snap right at the beginning of the month. Finally, this time the CFSV2 is forecasting uh, December in terms of a 700 millimetre height on me. So it looks unsettled and very mild. It's got below average heights out to our north and west. It's got above average heights down to our south southwest. And uh, we're bringing in long fat southwesterly winds there. So very mild. Uh, uh, with that, uh, definitely bring the air up from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and perhaps not overly wet for England and Wales, but Scotland and Northern Ireland, could, that could be very, very wet, particularly on the western side of high ground. Temperature anomalies are forecast to be substantially above average for December with the CFS uh, V2 and precipitation anomalies. No particular signal as usual, but you'd expect, particularly the northern western parts of the country, uh, a very wet month with those really mild, but also, of course, moisture laden southwesterly winds. So uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty about this early December period. Next week looks unsettled. Bouts of rain, again, particularly focused on England and Wales, perhaps bringing a renewed risk of localised flooding. Maybe a cold snap sometime around the turn of the month. And then I think increasingly we're probably moving towards something rather drier, but also a little bit milder through the first week of December. And of course, we would have to wait and see how long that lasts before, given what's happened through this autumn. I suspect it wouldn't be long before we'd be back to more uh, low pressure and spells of rain, but possibly drying out, turning a bit milder through the first week of December. Don't totally rule out that cold outlier GFS midnight run, but it was quite a significant outlier, and we saw within the ensembles that the trend is generally towards drier uh, and milder through the first week of December, so we shall see about that, of course. We'll be back uh, tonight with the night Christmas update. That'll be at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Lots coming up over the weekend. Tomorrow, We've got weekend forecasts, have a week to 10-day video updates, CFS 6 to look at as well tomorrow. Sunday, I don't know how I'm going to get it all in. 13th winter update, ECMWF Metro France seasonal model update. There'll be a Christmas update on Sunday and a live stream on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think by the end of Sunday, I'll be ready to have a lie down in a darkened room. But I will get it all in for you and uh, keep checking back for all of the updates. But that's all for now. And thanks for watching.